Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back and a happy new year. Let's walk you through DNS ad blocking and how it's actually working in a production environment. For example, if you're running it in your LAN, how will it look? How will it generate some statistics? What domains can you expect to be blocked based on, of course, the block list you're using? So in this video, I will run you through a quick view of my Pi-hole DNS sinkhole solution. I'm also running uh, a PF blocker solution, but that's for another video. At the moment, I have Pi-hole set up. It has been using, all my devices in my no network have been using that Pi-hole for some time now. So I have some nice statistics to show you guys what it actually looks like and what it does. I will also run you through a quick configuration of the Pi-hole itself. Um, so you can have some tips there, benefit uh, from my configuration if you're setting it up yourself. Of course, in the description, I will leave a overview of all the custom blacklists, the DNS block lists I have actually uh, in my pie hole. Um, you can set it up and benefit from that as well. Keep in mind, of course, that a block list can break some things, can break the internet in your network. So I will show you how you can whitelist stuff, etc., and how it looks like actually within the pie hole. Let's get into it. Now, before we get into the Pi-hole uh, statistics, uh, let me show you, this is my PFSense, and I have set up some redirect DNS rules. So what these rules are doing is actually, I have several networks defined within my, um, within my home, within my networks, I have several VLANs, and all those VLANs, I'm uh, getting all the DNS requests from all those VLANs and redirecting them, forcing them to actually use the Pi-hole as my DNS uh, server, as a DNS server. As you can see here, the Pi hole has the IP 192.168.150.5. That is the Pi hole. It's running on a separate network because basically my LAN is running in this subnet, the 100.1 slash 24, of course. And then I have a separate VLAN, a separate network specifically set up for my Pi hole. And why have I done that? Is because when you want to intercept DNS requests from a network, and route it to a different DNS server, that DNS server has to basically be on a different network, a different subnet. That is, that's the way uh, routing works, basically. So this makes sure that if I catch a DNS request not going to my Pi hole, it will catch it, the PFSense uh, firewall will catch it, and force redirect it to the, uh, to the Pi hole running in that other network. So routing will do its job. It will actually route the request. How this is done, I will leave the link in the description below because there is a official NetGate article uh, showing you how to configure this. What it, it basically does is it catches my network. It's, it's listening on this network, on my LAN, TCP, UDP, because DNS uh, can be both types of traffic. And then I'm telling in, I'm saying in this rule, well, let's get into the rule and you can see what I mean. And what this rule actually does, it's, it catches DNS to requests based on TCP, UDP and DNS. So that's port 53, of course. And uh, it's telling uh, PFSense that if the request, the DNS request is not going to this IP, force redirect it to that IP. That's what it basically does. You can see here the checkbox invert match is checked. That's a very important part of this rule to uh, work. But again, in the description below, I will leave the link to the NetGate article explaining this. Now let's get into the Pi-hole configuration. This is the Pi-hole running on this IP. This is the IP address, as you can see here. Again, it is on a different VLAN, so it has a different network. The reason why I'm doing that is because when I intercept a DNS request from one network, I need to be able to route it to the Pi-hole IP address that's living on another network. That's how routing works. Now, this is the dashboard. As you can see here, I have at the moment 58 devices actively using the Pi hole, so it has been running in my production uh, network for some time now. And the blocking percentage, that is 60% at the moment, based on, of course, uh, how heavy internet use there is, which we websites are you uh, accessing, actually, and where are you going, what are you doing on the internet? Well, I have a upstream server that's a local host, that's the unbound component running in this uh, Pi hole configuration because I'm using unbound to do resolving. And then I have a conditional forwarding in the Pi-hole setup to the PFSense firewall, which is listening in that 
network on the dot one IP address. And that's configured because when I do a host name lookups for my um, local network, I want it to resolve the IP addresses. So I tell Pi-hole basically go out to the upstream server to resolve certain uh, host names ending on a uh, on a FQDN, which is my LAN. I will show you that in a bit. This is the interesting part, of course, domains on ad list. These domains are based on, or the number here is based on a total of all the domains in all the block lists you are using. So what Pi-hole will do, it will, if you enter different several block lists and it will grab the block list from the internet, it will also remove deduped domains. So domains which are duplicate in different block lists, it will remove them and you will get the actual number of domains which are on the block list then in the database, in the FTL database running on Pi-hole. Pi-hole is running a FTL database for, uh, for the domains. So let's go to the configuration real quick. If I go into settings, and this is the important one because as you can see here, I'm using a locally installed unbound um, DNS resolver on the Pi-hole itself to do resolving. That's actually from a privacy perspective, I think that's the better choice to do, the better option to do, because this way your DNS requests won't get out to Cloudflare or Google DNS or the DNS of your ISP, um, but you will be in charge of actually doing uh, lookups for domain names. And what Unbound does, of course, it caches, it builds a cache of all the domain lookups and give it when you start it the first time it will be a little bit slow give it a day or two and it will build up that cache and it will eventually become faster than even cloudflare or google dns or your isp and you're doing the dns resolving yourself so when there is a problem at cloudflare dns or google dns um, you won't uh, be affected by it because you're using your own unbound dns you have that cache build up unbound reaches out to the root dns servers on the internet you will always be able to resolve host names independent from other forwarding DNS providers. And that adds to the privacy aspect, of course, because now the DNS request cannot be well registered at a an other at another DNS provider. Now, because I have Pi-hole running on a on another network, when you install it, you have to check this option for Pi-hole. It will tell Pi-hole that. If a request is coming from an IP address which is not in the same subnet you are, well, you are still allowed to respond to that request. That's a very important option here. If you don't do that uh, and you have Pi-hole running on another uh, network, on another VLAN, it will not respond to the IP addresses or to the, requ the DNS requests from another network. So make sure that you enable this option. Another interesting thing is the rate limiting. When you install Pi-hole, it will have some uh, options there for rate limiting. Of course, depending on your network, I have just lowered, uh, entered zero in both options here because I don't want any rate limiting happening, what, happening for Pi-hole because what happens is if your internet uh, is offline, if you don't have internet for a, uh, for a period of time, what will happen is there are several clients using this Pi-hole um, and there are some clients that will actually now hammer a pie hole uh, for DNS because DNS is not working. They cannot reach the internet because your ISP is down or your internet has, has a problem. Well, rate limiting will of course stop um, your pie hole for, from getting DDoS, so to speak, on your internal network. If rate limiting happens, if this mechanism um, blocks a DNS requests based on numbers entered here, you will of course get a notification as well in the in the interface of Pi-hole telling you that a specific IP address has been stopped from putting out too much DNS requests to the Pi-hole. Now, keep in mind that you have that option there. Another interesting part here I use for Pi-hole as well is I can when I have set up it, set it up, enter my block list, my white list, and my um, and my black list. I can of course back uh, the whole configuration up here. That makes it easy that when you have to reinstall a pie hole, you can restore from that backup. Now let's get back to the dashboard. Of course, these are the numbers. This is just running on a Pi version three. It's the DNS requests are not taking up a lot of resources, CPU wise or memory wise. You can see here what the load is on that uh, little Pi 
version 3 which is running with Byhole at the moment, it's it's nothing. Uh, you can see here also how, what percentage of blocks, DNS blocks has happened in a specific time slot, time period. That's very okay, nice to see. And then we can go to the statistics which are very interesting, the top permitted domains and the top block domains. These are the permitted and block domains based on the block list I am using. As you can see here, this is nothing, uh, nothing special if you know what these domains are doing. And make sure that you are aware that where, when there are top block domains here and something is not working in your network, internet or some app is not working, make sure that you check that top block domain list if something is there. And otherwise, go back to the query log. And in the query log, you can, of course, find what's happening in the DNS lookups. Now, if I go to the ad lists, this is the place where I have, where I have uh, configured all the block lists I have. Let me drop this down to all. I will leave this list in the description below. You can also find it on my website. This is the block list I am using. I have several block lists here, which I can turn on and off. Um, as you can see here, I have actually turned off a few of them because these are giving me a lot of false positives. Um, if I want to test something, I enter a block list here. I can enable and disable it depending on the situation. I mean, for these uh, block lists, I have disabled it. As you can see here, you can very quickly and very fast enable and disable the block list here. Now, another interesting thing, of course, is the disable blocking. If something is not working in your network and you want to just disable Pi-hole for a quick troubleshooting period, you can just disable it uh, not indefinitely, but for some period of, of time, of course, and then it will re-enable it again. So DNS ad blocking can help out a lot in blocking out those domains which are surfing ads or malware or some malicious website or trackers even. Make sure you understand what it does in your network so you can troubleshoot if something is not working. And it's a one is one of the solutions you can use to have some privacy back and some protection from malicious website. Again, in 2024, um, make sure that you are aware that privacy and tracking is a real thing on the internet. Um, this is one solution which can uh, prevent tracking and ad uh, serving within your network. Thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to click on subscribe and like. If you have comments, leave them in the comment section and I will get to them as soon as possible. And also take care. See you next time. Bye.